as we are starting to peel remember to maintain the flat end towards the bone and the soft rounded end towards the Schneiderian membrane and here we go and you notice we are uh, we are slowly but steadily peeling away the the Schneiderian membrane from the bone without rupturing it. I want you to realize one thing this egg is a great example to use but the membrane of this egg can rupture much easier and faster. Do keep in mind that the Schneiderian membrane in human beings is much more dense, a little bit more thick and not really readily terrible compared to what you would get in a in a chicken egg. But nonetheless, to practice it without any consequence of patient discomfort, tearing the membrane and waiting for six months for it to heal up, you can practice using an eggshell. Worse or worse, you lose a few pennies on an egg and not even that you can go if the instrument is sterile you can go ahead and fry the egg and enjoy a nice hearty breakfast so here now slow but steady I'm able to advance my instrument to about three to four millimeter in depth one thing has to be understood that here in case of an egg the anatomy internal anatomy is very nice and smooth you're not going to get that in a maxillary sinus. In the sinus we have, although it is not really rough or abrupt, but you do have hills and valleys inside. As the sinus internal anatomy varies according to the roots of the teeth it had covered or it might be covering at that time. It can also vary because of the number and amount and thickness of septum inside the bony septum in between the sinus and remember as it goes medially it rises by the nose so you would have that here I'm going posteriorly if there is tuberosity there then the maxilla is going to start curving upwards medially and slightly anteriorly but in this practice session as we're doing it on the egg we don't have that problem here the anatomy of the sinus quote unquote is visible from the outside but nonetheless the same principle still applies that you keep the flat end of your instrument towards the bone at all times and the rounded edge or the uh, rounded part of the instrument helps you peel up. Now if you take a look inside quote unquote the sinus is nicely peeled away there are no ruptures. I'm constantly balancing my finger on the eggshell here. You want to do the same thing inside the mouth so you don't have any slip of the instrument. It's a quick movement that is going to rupture the membrane not the slow movement. If you keep on doing it slow you should be able to peel off any large sinus without complication. In Inside the mouth you might see some bleeding at this time uh, and the bleeding is not necessarily coming from the sinus itself it is coming from the bone of the sinus remember that's living tissue that was being supplied with blood through the Schneiderian membrane and those capillaries you are at this moment cutting separating and moving off the coagulum that forms in that shape is actually beneficial because uh, you have platelet derived growth factors healing factors, clotting factors being activated by your surgical trauma. Now this goes further to prove as long as you keep this slow movement here I'm rotating the egg but inside the mouth you'll be rotating your hand inside. But as long as you keep on doing it you can lift as much of a sinus as you want. Never check the sinus with the flat end. Anytime you want to check the sinus check it with the back end of the instrument, the rounded end. Now this way, within a matter of minutes, you'll be able to peel a large amount of sinus back. The idea is to peel it inferiorly, anteriorly, posteriorly as you need, but you also need to peel it medially, which is towards the nose up. 
That is once you have done this, you can take now fresh blood from here, mix it with your bone graft. Uh, so you are incorporating into the allograft the platelet healing factors, growth factors, and some fibrin, clot activation. And you take that coagulum along with the bone and then you start packing it. You fill your syringe and then you can disperse the whole syringe. Remember, no quick movements. It's a quick movements that cause a problem. Slow and steady, you can do anything. Once you have packed the bone inside and you're done with that, then you'll go ahead and the bony window that you have kept nicely saturated with patient's own blood and some glucose for nutrition, you can place that back up on top. Once you place it back up on top, you can go ahead, if you like, cover it with membrane, separating membrane. Otherwise, there'll be nice condensed allographic bone on the inside and that is going to support this window of bone that you place up on top. You go ahead and stitch it all up and you have a nice sinus lift. Thank you.